<laughs> what up everybody we are back this is your boy bunny 3000 we are here i'm trying to see if i can get ah oh, there he goes kabling dirty hell mato's on oh he's gone again why does he keep disappearing what's up with that yeah don't disappear uh, on me biggie i got don't my um I got, I'm a... we can hear you but we can't see you So we're going to do this. We're going to go. Oh, peace out, Jay. <laughs> it's the Buddy Show. Yay. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. All right. We're going to put Thicky back in here. And, of course, we lose him on the feed. So, ladies and gentlemen, while we are trying to get Thicky Nation back on the scene. There I am. I'm oh, back. Is he back? Is he I'm black? Better. Is he black? I'm, I'm something. <laughs> see, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, I don't think I can see you. That's the thing. Oh, hold on. He killed the video. There we go. I should be back video. now. Killed the video. Okay. Uh, well, no, I'm still it, trying to see it, whether... When I read it, it looks like it just killed the video. Can okay. you see me? I don't know if they can see you. Can we see you? No, it's not. I don't know. It's weird because I can't see you either. Really? Yes, sir. Dun, dun, dun. Technical bunny culty. Connection yeah. speed is. Horrible. Horrible. Yes, it is. I'm trying to see if we can remedy that, everybody. Let's see. Okay, I can see you now. Okay, you can see the bunny. I don't know if they can see you is the thing. Oh, I know why they can't see you, because I turned off your jolts. <laughs> there you go, it is black again. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, I love technology, and technology hates me. How y'all doing today? <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> Bud is back in the place to be. Dirty Hell Motto is back in the place to be. Y'all are back in the place to be. Lord have mercy. We have had an amazing, uh, what, few days, I guess you could say, here at Geek Swag. Um, if, you, if you weren't a part of this previous week, then you missed out on a couple of great shows uh, for Geek Swag, and I, I guess that's kind of where I'll I'll, I'll kind of jump things off here. Um, for those of you who only join us here on Tuesdays, um, we actually did have a pretty momentous moment. If that's a word, it, that sounded so weird. A momentous moment. Um, <laughs> momentous moments. You know what I mean. Uh, we actually had harmonics on the show uh, this previous Friday. Um, I had a little special special session on uh, Friday afternoon where I streamed on the Heat Geek Swag site. And um, there we had a we had a bit of time to discuss with um, uh, Eric Pope and Aaron Trites, uh, who are both uh, community managers over there at Harmonics about uh, some of the past projects they've had. Um, some of the stuff they're working on, of course, rock, uh, rock Band 4, as well as some of the things that they have uh, currently released on like next-gen systems. Um, it was a very, very, very great discussion. Um, we had a, they gave us a, they gave me a really good explanation of why there's certain artists or songs or whatever um, that they do not have or just can't get on uh, the rock band song. So I, I'm going to let you take a guess, Jay, because I know you and Makita were all up in arms that one time and were like, dude, why can't they get such such their their song selection sucks and rah ba da ba da And I was like, dude, it's, it can't be as easy as you're saying it or else they would have all that stuff. So I'm going to let you guess as to what it is that you think it is that uh, keeps them from getting like Okay, what well, what do you feel that they should have that they don't have? Well, I mean, I know that there's 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 tough stuff to get. I mean, I know that, but like, 
I, I would think their biggest problem would be money. Nope. And licensing. That's that. Definitely that would, not I money. Think, money was not the issue. That the only other thing else I can think of is licensing. That's it. In part, but there's even more than that. So, I'll, I'll break it down for you. So, apparently, what was told to me um, that when it comes to when it comes to permission for them to get a song for Rock Band, you know, there's various people that they have to ask. Of course, they have to ask the actual band members of said band or group. Um, if the band says okay, then they have to go from the band and they have to get approval from the from the label. If the label says okay, then they have to go and um, I think there's their distribution. It's like from label to dis- distribution. If the distribution says okay, then they can take the uh, songs that they have and they can actually choose from those. Now, the issue is with which is kind of weird, as you might imagine with licensing, sometimes the band themselves or many times the band themselves, they don't own the masters. Somebody else does. And depending on how old the song is, even the label may not even own the masters. So like for some of the, you know, sort of like for a lot of the older bands, whether it's like Led Zeppelin or something like that, um, the people who own the masters or something, they either might not be reachable or they have no interest in it or, you know, they just don't see the value in even giving out, you know, licensing for video games or something like that. Right. So say you get past all of that and you say, hey, you know, we can. You know, we know who has the masters. We have that masters. We have the approval of everybody. Let's go ahead and do it. Then they have to actually use the actual uh, record, the actual studio recording, the master itself. They can't get like a iTunes or MP3 or a lossless, you know, the format. It, it really depends on the format that the song was recorded in as to whether or not they can even use it for Rock Band. Because when they... Um, If you haven't noticed, a lot of times on the songs themselves, uh, the songs themselves even sound a bit different than the versions that you might have, um, you know, like on your Greatest Hits album or even on the studio album on the CD that you got, right? Um, If you listen closely, because the way they end up having to do it is different parts or different instruments because you're either playing drums or you're playing the rhythm guitar or the solo guitar or the bass guitar they adjust the volumes for some of those tracks so that as you're playing you'll actually be able to hear yourself um so on some of the songs uh they have to be aware of that and they have to be able to you know do that sort of thing so if a particular recording is just a poor recording or if it's of a format that they can't use then they just can't use the song so they're like there's a lot of songs that they were like hey you know by default you would think something like that they'd have to be able to use it and they weren't able to because of you know certain things uh to that effect and um as i was talking to them they even went on went a little bit further and they were like um because i asked them i was like um so are you guys actually going to be able to um ooh, i think i lost jay hello you there yeah, still I'm, I'm still here. Keep going. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. You, <laughs> you like froze. I was no, like, oh no, no, I lost Dickie. No, no, my my connection is jacking up, man. You keep going. I'm gonna have to excuse myself. So let me go see if I can fix this thing because it's it's driving me nuts. It keeps going up and down. Oh, okay, so let, okay. Let me see if I can get a hard wire while you're you're going there. So keep them entertained with some rock band, sing a song, do something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue breaking it down for the people. Yeah. So, apparently, guys, if you are, guys, it, when it comes to Rock Band and some of the songs that they have and some of the issues they have with getting some of the songs, um, even after they get some of the songs, um, I asked them a question that had to do with their artist specific games. You know, I was like, oh, are you guys gonna do any more artist specific games as you did with the Beatles? Or you know, spe- you know, um, Aerosmith or something like, or Green Day because they did Green Day, they did the Beatles, um, they may have done one more, but I think all the rest of them were just DLC packs for the most part. 
Um, and they said actually that doing so really wasn't a good idea because as they were approaching different bands for more music, whether it was for more DLC or just for songs in general, some of them actually held off because they were like, well, you did a full rock band for Green Day or you did a full rock band for the Beatles. We want you guys to do a full rock band for us. And, uh, you know, they were kind of unwilling to either uh, give access to certain songs because they saw certain you know certain things so they were like uh we're not going to do that anymore because it, it kind of leads to favoritism and ego and so on and so forth and they just and you know they were like we're not going to do that anymore so that probably led to the downfall of um you know attempting to get certain songs or albums as well so don't come too hard come down too hard on eric pope and Aaron Chide says they, you know, try to put together the playlist for Rock Band 4. Um, as you can imagine, they were a bit tight-lipped. Um, uh, Harmonix was a bit tight-lipped when it came to providing additional info on Rock Band because they really aren't quite at a stage in its development where they can really, where they could really give a lot of details on um, like new features or uh such things they were basically telling me that they um they recently redid the entire engine for rock band uh for uh next next gen systems and uh they um I, w I was thinking they were going to you know they were gonna start talking and start revealing some stuff when i asked them about what it was about next gen systems that they liked so much more um, but they they kind of held off. They they basically kind of uh, summarized that the next gen systems because they're pre, uh, predominantly online, and uh, you know that they're able to do a lot of updates on the fly. That um, what they would like to do with Rock Band is to have the engine and the main game done and just release it, kind of like they did with uh, Dance Central and just have it as a platform so that going forward all they have to do is release dlc and maybe a few updates here and there that add features and they won't have to do like an additional rock band every single year um and I also like the sound of that yeah yeah because they were like they don't want to saturate the market with rock bands and new plastic instruments and they said that also they were like they're not making instruments anymore in the past, every time they did one, they made a new generation of plastic instruments for every rock band. They were like, wow. um, Harmonix is not doing the instruments. Um, they're getting rid of the guitar um, <laughs> because nobody used it. You know, they, they went and looked at the at, at the statistics and they were like, nobody really used the, the guitar. Would they make another one for um, the Xbox One or you would have to get like an adapter? What, for the guitar? No, just for any, like, you know, the drums, the whatever. Uh, from the sound of it, they said they didn't really explain how it was going to work, but they said that there was going to be backwards compatibility with the old plastic instruments. That leads me to believe that they're going to just have done to with use it. an adapter. Yeah. Right, you just, right, or the game would come with an adapter. I don't know if I guess. Right, that's yeah. what it sounds like they're going to do. Um, they didn't necessarily say that during the interview. Um, but also, they said Mad Cats is going to be making new instruments. Um, and because Mad Cats is more in the hardware side of things, that they are going to be able to make the instruments um, a bit more customized. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw. Um, let me see if I can find the picture real quick. Uh, they gave a picture of one of the um, one of the ones that they released or that they were actually selling at um, PAX. So let me see if I can get the picture. Dun, 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 here is the picture. Boo! So this uh, guitar controller they were selling at um, uh, at PAX East, when was that? February, and uh, they were basically saying that uh, that faceplate, that they between the faceplate and the paint, of course, that they can use on the actual Strat 
controller uh, that they were going to be able to do a lot more customization and you know a lot more variety to the controllers that they're going to release which they felt would be fun as well as for the uh, drum kits they said the drum kits that mad cats are going to be making uh, will also vary you know they'll look uh, not necessarily a lot different but they'll be a lot more uh, personality to the way they look rather than just the bland black plastic you know they'll they'll have have it look a little bit different um, in different colors and stuff like that so um, so yes everybody uh, if you guys didn't get a chance to watch uh, the interview um, the harmonics guys they they broke down a lot of different stuff they talked about why they didn't why they weren't going to be developing for the current gen systems and why you know this rock band is only going to be next gen um they also spoke about uh you know some of the they actually talked about a, some some of the other games that they have been developing since um rock band the last rock band released um and some of the learnings that they got from you know developing those um, and I got a little bit personal with Eric and Aaron and kind of got a little insight on their actual path to uh, work with um, Harmonix as well. So, you know, we got a, a, a nice little look at their journey and what actually brought them to Harmonix. Um, and interestingly enough, both of them uh, became a part of the Harmonix team after they had already started the whole rock band craze and everything. So, yeah. Um, it, it, it was a really good conversation. Uh, you guys should definitely go on um, heatmag.com backslash geekswag. Uh, you'll see all of our previous episodes there, as well as uh, that particular episode where we interviewed Harmonix. And it, it was really good. Very, very informative. You guys should definitely go watch it after you finish watching this episode. <laughs> yay. Yeah. Yay, yay. But, ladies and gentlemen, I kind of want to take a slightly different angle here um, and start off a bit with music because typically we leave music as the very last topic that we get into. Um, and the other, the other, um, some of the other stuff that we wanted, that we really wanted to get into, of course, is. Uh, um, one of the topics that I had that I kind of put up here for Jason to kind of dig into also um, was I like sometimes talking about how some of these different groups try to build their own super groups. You know what I mean? I know you've kind of seen it here and there where like um, I forget what the name of, of that band was. There was there was like some super group that I think like Satriani and a couple of other like you know big name guitarists they tried to make this big super group um and you know every once in a while of course queens of the stone age they end up they end up having like multiple band members from other really popular bands and um so i thought it would be interesting yeah velvet okay. revolver was one of them uh, yeah mm -hmm. you know they, that was a nice little super band yeah, one of the yeah. first ones I remember probably people would most of our listeners probably wouldn't even know about them. They were a heavy metal group um, from the early '90s. They're called Stormtroopers of Death, mm -hmm. which had some band members from Anthrax and um, Testament, mm -hmm. and then they, they they you know they would swap out some people, and all they would do is some ridiculous metal stuff. Man, it was just crazy. And that that group I used to love. That was probably the first time I can remember anybody putting like just getting like the best guys from a couple of you know bands and just doing it up and going you know crazy. Mm -hmm. So if y'all don't know about that, check it out. Stormtroopers of Death. Great, the first album, uh -huh. best album. It's short, but I mean it's short. It's like thirty minutes. All the songs are anywhere from about. 15 seconds to two minutes mm -hmm. but they're just wicked crazy i mean like you just it, is, it was like having an all-star team you know just doing the wackiest stuff you, th you could think of with 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 hardcore heavy metal it, it was just, <laughs> it's just crazy actually if i still have the album i'll mm -hmm. give it to you and let you listen to one of them okay and you let me know what you think about it all right yeah i have to check that out i have to check that out actually i i 
kind of cheated. I decided to go on Guitar World and try to see if there were some, so if I could find the actual super groups that I was thinking of. Actually, uh-huh. the one that the one that I was thinking of that was most recent was uh, Chicken Foot. You remember that? Chicken Foot. Who's in that one? That had um, uh, Joe Satriani. It had the drummer from Red Hot Chip Chili Peppers, Chad Smith. Um, and I think it, it had somebody, it had a few other people in it also, but, um, uh, it had somebody from Van Halen in there also, but you know, they, they released a few albums, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the name from, um, uh, what's the guy that used to be in, um, Nirvana, the drum, Dave Grohl yeah. from the Foo Fighters. He had a super band too, uh, Probot. Yeah, That's, yeah, Probot. Yep. Probot's a very good uh band. I love I love that stuff, man. Let me tell you, I'll be rocking out to that and all the guest singers he had. He had Lemmy from Motorhead. <laughs> he had uh he had this um I forgot the guy's name, the lead singer of this band I used to love back in the nineties. Uh Dirty Rotten Imbeciles was the name of the band. Uh huh. Um he had uh guys from Queens of the Stone Age do covers. I mean it was just crazy, dude. Yeah. It's yeah, I, I I love that album. That's like I, I wish they would have done more. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Here's one. Apparently, Black Country Communion. Um. That had a formal a former Deep Purple and Black Sabbath bassist Glenn Hughes. Um. It had Buh. It had let's see. Dream Theater's keyboardist Derek Sheridan. Yeah, he's Sheridan. Right here. Um, Jason Bonner. And somebody else in there also. Um, kind of bluesy kinds of kind of uh, albums apparently was what they did. Um, let's see if there were some other ones that are recognized that are recognizable. Um, Oysterhead never heard of that one i haven't heard of that one either apparently fish guitarist trey anastasio and okay. uh stuart copeland of the police yeah okay that guy oh. <laughs> so oh yeah uh i think there's something in the background that's chirping in your background there jay really? on, yeah somebody in the uh feed was saying that uh getting a bit of back background noise over there I don't have anything on. I don't know. Let me check see if my cell phone is sometimes cell phones be uh around here. Something. something. <laughs> oh, let me let me adjust the mic. See if that helps a little bit. I don't know how much better that is, but now you kill some of the the mic. See if that. Uh, yeah, it's kind of low, but it's in the background or something. It's weird. Um. I know there's been some other ones though, but it's one of those where I'm trying to find ones where the band members are people that, you know, people recognize. It's 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 hard when you don't listen to a lot of, uh, you know, Audio Slave. I guess you could consider them one. Uh, I didn't you really know, think they were. Yeah, uh, it's it. Well, it's it's almost like just a reincarnation of another band. I mean, you know, Morello went off and you know pulled together. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, that was almost like a almost like a different Rage Against the Machine because you know it was right. a couple. It was a couple of guys from Rage Against the Machine, and they pulled in some other people. So not quite quite yeah because rage against the machine just they were they're just like dead (laughs) that's it you know they weren't they weren't around anymore Uh, it's it's the same thing here's a good one velvet revolver yeah i know i mentioned them in the beginning yeah (laughs) was it was that the one no you said uh something stormtroopers or whatever no but i mentioned velvet revolver because it has uh what's his name um it's it's made up most of the old Guns N' Roses uh, band with a different lead singer. Um, yeah, it's got it had um, Scott Weiland. Scott Weiland, Scott yeah, Weiland from uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah. Pilots, yeah. 
that's an awesome band too. I got a couple of their albums, and I just be loving those. Those are good too. Yes, yes. So yeah, those were those were a few on the on the rock side. I I kind of had some other little reimaginings um, of some because I know recently they had. You know, you tried to have Jay Z and Kanye do their little super group. Um, uh, what is the other other one that Eminem put together? Um, oh yeah, um, shit. It's like Sledgehammer or something weird like that, right? Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse, that's it. Yeah, they, he he put together Slaughterhouse with Royce and, and uh, a bunch of other MCs. They they've kind of underachieved, I think. Um, you, you can't really consider Wu Tang a super group because they kind of came out together, but right. you know okay. they're almost they're almost the ultimate super group because they started off as a super group. Super group, you know, right? That, that, that's just a unique situation, I think, in all kinds of music. I, it's it's hard. Yeah, they're to, very successful doing it too. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to to think of too many other groups that came out first and then every everybody that like broke off ended up doing relatively well with yeah. their own solo projects so so i was trying to think what if you so let me ask you this jay if you had your choice um build your own two super groups of some any, of like any, any, any genre or just doesn't matter like... any genre Ooh. any genre uh Damn, that's a tough one, man. Because I got so much stuff in my head that I would like to to hear, you know. Like uh... I know, right? So I'll I'll kind of I'll kind of give you a little bit of time, right? So I, I I came up with a couple that I would love, 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 love to have. All right, what you got? Okay, so you know me, I'm a big I'm a big soul fan, but you know I I love I love the style that um, people like Mad Lib and Jay Dilla and uh, you know Ali Shaheen Muhammad kind of took when it came to uh, the Uma or Tribe Called Quest or the whole Native Tongues movement or the Soul Quarians right a lot of those producers where there are a lot of people recognize it a lot they did sample a little bit but between Jay Dilla and Mad Lib and everything, these guys are multi-instrumentalists, right? So they, they know how to play a lot of different instruments on top of using jazz samples to be, uh, I guess, the centerpiece for a lot of the tracks that they do, right? right. So um, I felt like the ultimate supergroup would be Sade, Jay Dilla, Raphael Sadiq playing bass, and this new uh, kind of, I guess you'd say, contemporary jazz guy that's doing a lot of really, 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 really interesting albums called Robert Glasper. Um, okay. He does like a jazz piano, but he's been he's been playing a lot. He's actually got this really, really good um, jazz rendition of uh, "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Okay. And uh, it's it. I think that would be like the ultimate would be like the ultimate army group for me, you know because i think dilla would be able to put sade in like a whole new light but still having somebody on the whole jazz side of things as well as you know Raphael playing bass as well as guitar that you know you could still smooth it out and keep it where sade typically sound where her sound typically is so um you know, I, I think that would be, I think that would be dope. Um, you wreck Mazino is saying, do we, are we up on OC Remix? No, I would have I, to I'm say not. no. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to have to look that up too. OC Remix. What that is, what that is. OC remix. You know what I've been feeling too? Not, not super group stuff, but, um, um, that movie Run All Night that's, uh, with, uh, Liam Neeson. I've been hearing some of the tracks for from the commercials that they've been putting out, and they've been doing some wicked remixes. What I've been loving lately is um some of these R and B singers doing um 
like old school hard rock songs but with an R&B twist on them mm-hmm. like uh, here's some some old Jimi Hendrix you know some dudes are doing over mm-hmm. and with an R&B tip on it and I can't find like who they are but just I'm talking about wicked impressive mm-hmm. just wicked impressive um, and I heard this girl singing um, Sweet Child of Mine um, from Guns N' Roses, but like with the, this smooth R&B tip, man, it's just it's so hot. I was just like, I was, it, it was impressive. It was very impressive. And yeah, you you gotta look that up. You gotta shoot me the link. You know what? That. You know what the thing is? I spent like half an hour trying to figure out who these people are, and you can't get it. Like, and you know what? I end up on these forums, uh-huh. and I get the same thing. Hey, who sing this song? And then everybody's trying to figure it out. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, like, who is it? Right? And then you go crazy and get mad because like you get. You get little snippets of the song, and you don't get the whole thing. So it's you know a little disappointing, but um, um, it was the, the the song. I don't know. I'm gonna do a quick search. It's "Welcome to the Jungle" uh-huh. um, from Guns N' Roses, but it was done in an R and B way, and it was just so freaking hot, man. I you know I was I was crazy. Definitely, yeah. You definitely have to. Gotta gotta get, stay up on that so we can hear that and put it in the show or in the show notes at least um Yurek Mazino was telling me that uh the OC remix is like a community it's like a community site that uh okay. apparently uh a lot of the artists there they do a lot of fan made uh video game mu- music remixes and, and, and so on so it's it's an interesting site where you know um they take video game music and you know make songs and stuff out of that, that that sounds pretty interesting i'm gonna have to check that out definitely have to check that out um but yeah the one of the other one of the other little super groups i was thinking of that would be interesting to have um and, and i don't know if you it, it, you, you might like this one. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if you like this one. But I was thinking they got to do another Lucy Pearl, right? Because they got to get rid of... Because Don Robinson is like a bum, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like... That was, for me, Lucy Pearl was an R&B super group. You know, because... Uh, you know, Raphael Sadiq from Tony, 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 Ali Shahi Muhammad from A Tribe Called Quest, and Don Robinson is from In Vogue. And they got to, together and made a beautiful album. Lucy Pearl was a great album, right? And then after that album was done, Don Robinson got pissed off again because she was in a group again, and she <laughs> felt like she wasn't getting enough money. So right. she bounced after one project and i'm like yo you guys are just getting started he was like you know you guys are just making a name for yourselves as a different group as a new group and you know the stuff they were putting out was great so i was like fine you don't want to be a part of it i will make a whole new lucy pearl and i have like the perfect girl that could replace her now oh. have you have you heard um do you remember this one uh, I guess they consider themselves so acid jazz group called um, Brand New Heavies. Yep, love the Brand Back New the Heavies. Yep. Okay, so they had, you know, they kind of recycle singers here and there also, but some of their, a lot of their early work, uh, the singer that they had um, in that group was called Inde Davenport. Yes. You heard of her? Yep. She is, I love, 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 love her voice. She is very, very skilled at being able to sing blues. Punk, was she she was she the she was the first one right i think so i think she was the yeah first she was there she was the original one yeah yeah so she did like the first two or three albums of theirs and then they started you know doing musical chairs uh with a couple of different head lead singers and stuff before she came back um but i think she would be a perfect replacement you know because uh you know it, it seems like between Ali Shahi Muhammad and Rafael Sadiq, they end up bouncing around between really great uh, female singers anyway in a lot of the projects that they do. Um, you know, like, you remember Vinia Mojica? 
from um from like Tribe Called Quest. They had they would yes, have yes. her on like a couple of songs here and songs, there or yeah. something like that. But she never came out with her own project. Right. You know, so it was like somebody like her. You Same know. thing with Takifa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Takifa. Takifa from, you know, Wu Tang. She Wu-Tang, did her Wu-Tang. thing on like you every single Wu Tang track and you never saw a solo a solo project from her. It's almost like she was right. a part of Death Row or something like that, you know. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> you know, there's like Just so many people. Get there. <laughs> yeah, and you know they were talking about that, right? A while back. I think it was like a year or so ago when they when they somebody finally bought the rights to the whole Death Row catalog. Uh-huh. Um they were like all those different artists that you kept hearing like mc hammer and lady rage and everything that had like additional albums that they recorded but they never released um they said there's a bunch of albums um by a bunch of those guys that they were planning on releasing and um I don't know what that's, what's that's gotta are. be tough because i mean if that stuff is is, is sitting on how much i mean how much shelf life it's gonna have you know well, Especially I mean, with the way hip hop is around this time, you know. Oh hell yeah! They're, or I even R and B, it's they like missed their window. Yeah, it, it, it's it's like gone, man. It's hard to bring that back. I'm not saying it's impossible, but oh, see, and that's my thing. I, I'm like, my my thing is when it comes to like death row and everything like that. I mean, it, it's almost like a historical kind of legendary label in hip hop. You right. know, so it, it, it's one of those things. Like that you go in the museum and be like, yeah. "Oh look, daddy, it's like, oh, 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 it's Lady of Rage. Look at her Afro puffs." Right, <laughs> Suge Knight. Yeah, Suge Knight was in jail again. Um, uh, but you know, it, it, it's like, it, it's like I think that if they did it in the right way, they could definitely sell a decent. You know, they would definitely wouldn't be able to take over hip hop or anything. Right. But they would definitely be able to sell a decent amount just off of the nostalgia because you can listen. A lot of that stuff made back then. Because I mean, good download for like six bucks or something like that. You know, you you'd be you do that, but you wouldn't go spend eighteen dollars on a CD. Well, that's the thing. You wouldn't. That's the thing because of the different artists that they had on the label that weren't necessarily top tier names or whatever people didn't know who they were most of them so it's almost like they'd have to do a compilation album right you know what i mean you're right because the people that were putting them on you know you probably heard the track say like you know you had ghost face and then (laughs) takifa would be on there you'd be like yo who's that girl singing the hook and then you find out and then you know you might wait six months a year to see if you hear anything from her but if you don't if she's not on the regular Uh you know you're gonna lose interest, and yeah. nobody's gonna know, and all that. So that that was exactly. their window, and that's where a lot of people. I mean, Dan, like Lady of Rage, I thought she was. She oh my gosh, she was, she was, was crazy, devastating, yo. She you know, was. like she really had some good lyrics, and, and then she was, had one album. Uh, one album. The I thing think that was. the thing that gets me is that was such an impressive time for hip hop. If you think about it, there were a lot of female MCs that were out that had major label deals back then. Yeah. a lot yep and they were all doing relatively well on their own on their own you know yep. Lil Kim um uh Foxy Brown Lady Big Rage yep. The Brat The Brat Missy Elliot oh man there, there were just so many and I I swear I know I'm missing some in there you have to apologize Bahamadia did decent Jean yep. Grey I mean I know Jean, Jean Grey's Gray been was... doing she wasn't yeah. really out out back then. She didn't come until a little bit later on, I think. Well, but, I think um, I, I, Lauren I think Hill. That, yeah, I think Dame Dash messed her up, you. Know? <laughs> oh, he did, he did. yeah, it screwed over. <laughs> but um, you know, there were a lot of a lot a lot of top tier female MCs back then, and now all of a sudden you look in today's market, and it's like there's nobody. Well, know? everything's everything's kind of turned into um, pop. Pretty much pop, yeah. I mean, even Nicki that's, Minaj, that's, she sings on her album because you know she doesn't do straight hip hop. She's got like three or four pop songs or whatever on her album right. um, that she sings, you know, because she's doing the whole Drake thing because that's what Drake does. <laughs> you know, what I mean? that, that kind of messed me up. And you know what? Like, I, I actually, you know, I got a little bit more respect for Drake because he, he is talented. You know, I mean, I don't listen he to is. all. Of but like I mean, he, you know, everybody to be singing him some when he came some wicked slow it. jams and then come busting off some rhymes. That's that. Yeah, you know, that, everybody that, does that, it. Now. Yeah, you know everybody that takes some talent. 
Yeah, it, it does. You know, I mean, uh, Childish Gambino does both. that. Childish Gambino does that. Yeah. Um, he does it pretty well. I know uh, Chaos, uh, the Canadian MC, he does that very, very well. He's he's one of the few artists that I think could do a whole acoustic set by himself. Yeah. I mean, like Lord all, Hill. You know, and it Lord all Hill started with – um, what, what's his name? With Common. I mean, Common was breaking it down like that. Yeah, he was too. <laughs> Holding he up was signs. <laughs> yeah, he was holding up signs and doing acoustic. He was doing the whole thing. You know, it's – it, it's wild that was such an amazing time just for music in general music was selling yeah. off the charts back then yeah. you know um but yeah it's it, it's wild to see how music has kind of progressed i i have to me personally i kind of have to put a little bit more effort into trying to get uh some musicians or something in here you know just well, to you, know, talk you, you know what's you know what's like been is surprising me and i gotta give um my, my shout out to, to to my halfers which are you know my white folks Hey, yo. yo, they've been representing R and B, man. Let me tell you. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> um, pretty impressive stuff. I mean, like you know, you know, from um, uh, what's my girl that passed away? Um, Amy Winehouse. Yep, Amy from Amy. Starting. Yep. I mean, like she was when I first heard her, and I I thought she was black, you know. And I was like, yo, yeah, we got some good. Stuff. I was like, yo, is she from England? Oh, England representing. Yeah. And then you know, um. Uh, you know uh, what's the other girl there? Uh, like the little, the little heavy set girl. Damn, I'm forgetting everybody's name tonight. I'm, I need to go Adele. To sleep or something. Adele, right? Well, that's what's hilarious. It, it, that's what's hilarious. Um, Ed Sheeran. UK, oh my god, Ed Sheeran's of off the hook. Who? Ed Sheeran. Yeah, Ed Sheeran. Um, you know, Marsha Ambrosius. She's from the UK. Yep. Um, from Flowetry. Uh, there's another guy named Daly. That's been doing yes. really well. He's he is an amazing, amazing um, artist. I love love daily. Um, gosh, I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, Joss Stone. She's from. Isn't she from overseas? I think she's from the UK also. Um, and I, of course, I think we. Jay, you still there? I'm still here. Oh, okay, okay. No, I didn't hear. <laughs> I was saying we had. Uh, we had uh Jaw Stone. She's from out she's from out that way. Um man, there's there's a lot of really, really impressive um uh British talent in soul music today. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, they actually have this other band, I don't know if you ever heard of them, they're called Outlandish. Um it's like <laughs> it, it's one guy, one guy from like uh I think it's like Saudi Arabia or something like that, mm -hmm. and an English guy, and they do they do like a mix. They do hip hop and R and B. You know, some of the guy, you know, some of them sing, some of them, you know, be rhyming. Mm -hmm. They're actually pretty good too. I've been listening to those guys for a couple of years now, and they're mm -hmm. pretty big in uh, Europe. All right. Um. So that that's another band. If nobody, that's that's one of them little DL guys you don't hear in the U.S. too much. But if Who anybody check, Outlandish. Outlandish. Okay. I'll yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. They got some, you know, they got some, um, one of my favorite songs is called Calling You. Mm -hmm. That's, it's, it's hot. And this dude, you know, he does, I've never heard somebody rapping like, <laughs> it's like Arabic or something like that. It's crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's pretty sick when you listen to it. And, uh -huh. and you know, they, dude, they got beats, man. You know, like there, like I, I try to listen to and like the stuff that we we've been you know been trying to recycle in it's <laughs> yo they've been they've been pumping it they're they're coming up with their own you know thing yeah and they're and it's good i mean it's really good yeah that's fresh i have to, I have to try that out I have to yeah check them out. out i got i got an album of theirs somewhere i'll let you uh i'll let you get a copy of that and check them out just good Let's stuff see. like i said very boy diverse. rick mazino is saying Parov Stellar and some other electro swing groups he's kind of into now. Um, yeah, there's, I like electro swing he's stuff. Got, he, he, he has a point, though. There's a lot of new groups that are coming out now that have like a new wave retro kind of sound. Yeah. And I agree with him because I, I like some of those groups. He, he kind of mentioned Ogre, Laserhawk. I got to check out some of these dudes. Ogre, Laserhawk, uh, Le Matos. So I might have to check out some of these, some of these guys. I'm breaking up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but also, um, 
just to kind of uh, to leverage off of that as one of the last little music topics I kind of wanted to get into. I wanted to ask you, Jay, whether or not you have heard anything from uh, there. The la- actually not too long ago, it might have been like a year ago, but uh, they had a mixtape that came out around the same time this year, um, kind of uh, in anticipation of the new Game of Thrones season. And it was a mixtape that HBO kind of sponsored where they got, you know, top tier artists and had them do uh, Game of Thrones inspired songs. Right. So like the first the first um, the first one, they called it Capture the Throne. Right. And what it was what it had on it. uh, Let's see who was on the first the first mixtape because they're at volume two now um catch the throne not capture catch the throne catch the throne mixtape ah there we go um so like the very first volume had um it was mostly it was mostly hip-hop the first one was mostly hip-hop right okay so they had uh big boy do do a song um bodega bams uh some girl named kilo kish daddy yankee dominique omega um snow the product common and wale right so it was mostly hip-hop on that first album this second volume they went bonkers they had they got um mastodon um Talib Kweli, Estelle, Anthrax, Yandel, Snoop Dogg, Melanie Fiona, Kill Switch Engage, wow. uh, some group named MNDR, and Method Man. And dude, I'm telling you, the first the first volume I wasn't too thrilled about. There were only a couple of songs off of that one that I didn't um, that I wasn't into. Um, but this one, I'm telling you, like the song that I, I had never heard of this group, um, MNDR, but they, you know, it, it, they've kind of got this weird kind of, I guess you'd call it new wave pop kind of sound or whatever. Um, and the girl kind of sounds like some of the little pop songs that you would hear on some of the commercials or whatever. Okay. But, uh, you, I love the sound though. You've got to check it out um, on their mixtape. It's on SoundCloud, and it's called uh, "Catch the Throne, Volume 2. And uh, so, like you know, Meth Meth song is is pretty decent. Um, I love I love uh, um, Kill Switch Engage's song is pretty dope. Uh, Melanie, Fiona, Melanie Fiona's song is really good. It, it's kind of got a reggae kind of sound to it. Snoop Lion, <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's an uh, his song is called Lannister's Anthem. So it's interesting to kind of um, it's interesting to kind of hear that song. Uh, Crunchy to uh, Taco Smack is asking what we're talking about. We're we're actually talking about a uh, mixtape that uh, HBO sponsored that. Uh, they had a bunch of uh, I guess you'd say big name artists do their own renditions of songs that were inspired by the Game of Thrones uh, the Game of Thrones TV show which of course is coming on middle of April I think and it's pretty good it's pretty good I I like it a lot it's very diverse you know the first volume was not diverse at all but this one has got death metal it's got pop it's got hip hop it's got uh, Yandel is uh, you know is rap he's basically singing and rapping in um, Spanish or whatever so you know he's some Latino artist that I don't know um Oh, is Snoop getting all Rastafari? Hey, it was it was natural for him. Matt 100 was asking <laughs> what we think about Snoop getting all Rastafari. For him, it's natural. He smokes so much so much weed that you know it's almost a religious experience for him at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know it, what I mean? It, yeah, when he when, when he go to like Jamaica a few years yeah. ago, yeah, that's when yeah. he came back. He changed his uh, changed his name to Snoop Lion. <laughs> Yeah, it's organic for him, you know. It, it 
I mean, that whole transition for him, it made sense to me. I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't surprised when he did. Yeah, me either. I just was like, huh? <laughs> it's like, oh, for real? Word? Yeah, well, he's still smoking. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, before we get into the games, I did want to, I did want to um, talk about one thing. Um, here, here at uh, Geek Swag, we do try to promote uh, STEM uh, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, and try to get our young ones interested in it. So I try to do this little bit that I call Adventures in Bungeoneering, where I kind of highlight little interesting um, bits of news that have to do with technology and engineering in general. So um, on today's episode of Bunge- Adventures in Bungeoneering, um, I saw this one uh, article actually today, I think it was, on MSN where the Air Force has actually already started training um, some of their pilots with remote-controlled F-16s. So wow. actual X- F-16s are being outfitted with, you know, um, robotics and, you know, the right uh, gear or whatever so that they can be fly, excuse me, so that they can be um, manless. And that they can be, re- I'm sorry, not man, they can be remote piloted. So, um, of course, they're only doing this in training exercises. But, I mean, hey, that's just the first step, right? You get you get the uh, remote controlled fighters and the drones. I mean, you know, they've always had drones, but drones aren't the same thing as actual fighter jets. You know what I mean? Um, next thing you know, we're just going to have Skynet taking control of all of our F-16s, <laughs> and they're going to be flying them. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're basically big drones, right, man? Well, you, well that, that that falls right in line with the, uh, they have a new Audi that's trying to make a trip from, from California to New York, uh, yep. driving on its own, so mm-hmm. we're yep. almost there, people. Yeah, it, it's almost very, there. very close. I, I Actually, I remember reading a couple of articles. They said that uh, the remote control well not remote control but ai controlled or robot controlled cars um they are looking to have those ready for market by i want to say either 2018 some have said 2018 and then others have said uh 2020 because i think apple is supposedly working with uh tesla to do a car and i think a part of the reason why they're banding together is they want to make a car that um you know is driverless so we'll we'll see but yeah the it's really yeah i agree with matt 100 it's it's pretty scary to to see that they're gonna be doing you know remote control fight you know fighter jets and stuff because it's a lot more fighter jets are a lot more complex than uh drones but yeah they will save lives in the front line to a degree but i don't know it's it, it's a it's a thin line you know it's it's war you know you're, you're still gonna be killing people <laughs> yeah I mean? I mean yeah you're trying to save human lives i mean i guess on your side on your side your side right i mean yeah. it stinks but you know what you're not gonna have a fighter pilot up there what's still a plus about it is that it's you know it's remote control so you still have someone controlling it it's not like you know, a computer making a decision or anything. Right. So someone at the end of the day is still pushing that button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll have Cylons before you know it. Don't worry. <laughs> as long as they don't Cylons, convert Cylons, the Cylons will be here before you know it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. <laughs> Get them. Oh, Ugh. man. So uh today uh before we get into the serious gaming discussion um i did want to let you guys know about some of the other gaming that uh later on this week um that between myself as well as jason uh will probably be playing um on twitch uh i will i recently got uh, a code for borderlands 2 for the xbox one so I'm going to be jumping back into that, and I think they released uh, an all-new DLC that goes along with that one. I think it's the Handsome Collection. Yes, um, it is. So I will be jumping into that. Um, apparently, me receiving that basically uh, stopped me from purchasing Battlefield Hardline because I was itching to play something else uh, in my gaming library. So uh, I was going to ask you if you were going to buy that because if you were, I was going to splurge too. I might still. You have- if you don't splurge, I'm not splurging because I don't want to play it by myself. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, I know, I, I might still. 
Um, but uh, also another game um, that I will probably stream on the site tomorrow uh, on Ladies of the Roundtable tomorrow um, is called Moonrise. I don't know if you guys have, have heard of it. Um, but Moonrise is made by uh, the same company that does um, that did that one game, Jay, that I was telling you about a while back called uh, State of Decay. Yes. Um, Undead Labs. And this is like their – apparently they've released I, – I, I can't – I haven't figured it out 100% yet, but I think they may have released this game on mobile for iOS – but they are in closed beta right now to have it released in uh, on Steam. And um, I'm a part of the closed beta. So I'll be streaming this game probably some tomorrow, um, probably around 10 o'clock. But essentially, from what I've seen of it, it's basically a... I don't want to necessarily say more realistic because that doesn't sound right. But it's almost like a different kind of Pokemon game. You know, you, you capture monsters, you, you upgrade your monsters, you give them different skills and all this other kind of stuff, and you use them to battle other people. Apparently, they have some other element in there in the storyline where you actually take uh, – where actually some of these monsters that are out there are tainted or, you know, they're being controlled by some darkness. So you're going – you're not only going out there to capture them, you're going out there to, quote, unquote, save them from something um hey what's up c plus <laughs> two <laughs> um so moonrise uh you, if you guys are interested in that you might want to check that out check me out uh tomorrow on the site uh ladies of the round table um oh just so that matt 100 knows and this is something that i haven't i i need to do um me here at the top, in case you guys don't know, uh, my name is Bunny3000. I'll be the one that will be streaming here on Ladies of the Roundtable tomorrow. Um, Jason down here uh, is Dirty Helmet. I think on Twitch you're what, Dirty Helmet 1? And I think he locked up. <laughs> His internet is horrible. <laughs> Damn, Jay, you're, you're Twitch. <laughs> You just got cut off again. Um, yeah. what, what's your Twitch? Your Twitch handle again is Dirty Helmet One. Yep. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So Jay Jay's on Dirty Helmet One. Um. So one of the things, one of the other games that I'll probably be streaming. Um. Let's see, Moonrise. Um. And actually, I need to get this off. We haven't been talking about this in a while. But what I am going to be streaming soon, uh, let's see here. Or actually, I've been trying to figure out if I'm going to be streaming to or getting into, and you will see it when it gets up here, is Star Citizen. I don't know how much you guys know about this game, but this is, this is um, an interesting uh, a game that I kind of wanted that I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about. Jay, have you heard about Star Citizen? Um, I've heard, but I haven't, you know, like seen any details about a gameplay, etc. All right, so I don't. Basically, Star Citizen is made by the same guy who did Wing Commander. Okay, so he put out, um, he put out like a Kickstarter or crowdsourcing kind of deal, and this dude ended up. Right now, I think the total tally is over seventy million dollars. Okay, wow. and backers this was the same game that uh we were talking about a few episodes ago where people were paying like thousands of dollars for the for the ships and stuff, which right? is ridiculous yes which is ridiculous but this is the actual game and i went on there to see uh to see what they were talking about and they're still selling game they're still selling uh ships access for certain ships in the game or in a portion of the game for like between sixty dollars to like three hundred dollars or something like that, and they're still releasing new ships as they go along and different variants of different ships, right? And this was a, a, also the game that I was telling you that uh, the the um uh, what is it the the update for this game is going to be over a hundred gigs. Wow. 
And so it's like basically they're going to have people just delete the old version and just upload the new version because it's so big. Rather than update it, they were like, yo, just delete the old version and upload the new version, right? And the reason why this game is so big is that it is extremely ambitious, okay? So you know how you know how Wing Commander is, right? It's strictly a space combat sim, right? So the whole theory behind it is they want Star Citizen to be um, a full-fledged, I guess, outer space experience because you can get in and out of your ship. So ultimately, what he wants you to be able to do is be in a space station, run around in the space station, talk to people, buy stuff, do stuff, go jump in your ship, go off, explore, destroy stuff, shoot stuff, go land on some random planet, do like a first person shooter kind of deal on the planet. In your $3,000 spaceship. In your $3,000 spaceship. <laughs> no, not in the spaceship. You've already landed the spaceship on the planet. Oh, you're, you're on the planet. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're okay, running you around. Your $3, and um, and so it, it's supposed to have different modules that they're going to have. So apparently the module that they have now is like Arena Commander or something like that, right? And it's the Space Combat Sim only module, right? And the rest of it, though, is supposed to be, you know, the first person shooter. And I think there's even supposed to be another element to it where I think you can control capital ships or something like that. Right. But it is mega ambitious. And considering this guy has over has a team that ends up has ended up getting over 70 million dollars to make this game. I'm like, damn it, man, you'd better have a whole lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's amazing how much money that they've got for this game. But it's going to be huge. Um, so, you know, the I think the way that it's kind of set up right now is um, the game itself. Uh, when you if you like pay for it or try to get into it now because it's not done, you know, it, I think they still consider it to be in beta stage or something like that it's not quote unquote officially released um so what they're trying what they have though is let me see if i can find the explanation of all the different modules right you know it's it's supposed to be you know they're saying it's more than a space combat sim more than the first person shooter and more than an mmo it's a first person universe so they keep releasing new you know more and more uh galaxies um that you can explore and do all kinds of stuff in right um da -da 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 -da, plant your flag real risk real reward there's combat exploration trade um you know I, I was listening to somebody talk about the actual uh space combat that you can actually pull off maneuvers just like you remember in uh Battlestar Galactica where they would have a lot of the space battles and they would show you know they would show the true momentum where you would actually see them using thrusters and then they'd stop their thrusters and then you know the ship would continue forward and then they would still be able to use smaller thrusters to reorient themselves and then hit thrusters and like do a complete you know a complete 180 in one maneuver you know they have that kind of uh uh, actual I guess you would call it actual space uh, uh, combat or you know traversal whatever you want to call it control or something like that um, so it's it, it looks like it's an extremely ambitious game um, I've heard people that have actually gone into it and played it and I've I've heard different things from different people some people they hate it because they think it's it's uh boring which in theory it can be but you know it's based on how you really want to play it because if you guys remember correctly wing commander had um what was that other one called jay privateer i think it was called yeah privateer yeah. yeah and that one was based off of you know you you could be anything you could be a pirate you could be a mercenary you could be a trader you could be somebody that just explores you could be somebody that does mining operations and essentially that's what they're allowing you to do in this game they're like okay if you just want to go and mine and you know get a whole bunch of resources and just make 
a whole lot of money and start your own company or something like that you can do that in this game or will be able to do that in this game um so it, it's interesting to see what scope that they're aiming for and yes matt 100 this star citizen is strictly pc it is not you know this because of the size of it you wouldn't be able to play it on a console it's just too big it's too large um but we'll you know we'll we'll see if they end up uh getting enough well i mean they've already geez they've got 70 million dollars from crowdsourcing i i can't imagine them not being able to consider doing at least a portion of the game on consoles you would think they would consider it but um from my understanding they have no plans to do console they're only doing pc and it's going to have to be a badass pc yes because apparently this game is gorgeous there's going to be a lot to it and you know it's going to be community powered apparently so star citizen ladies and gentlemen um i know i from my understanding uh there is a lady i think her name is nicole and i think her like twitter handle is star citizen aa or something like that um she she all she does is just community updates and you know she's like the star citizen expert but she's a part of the ladies of the round table live uh show that comes on on this channel on fridays at 9 30 um and she knows a lot about star citizen and you know i think she has you know she and she does like a bunch of youtube videos when they release new ships and everything um but yes star citizen if you guys haven't heard of it, you should check it out it is pretty interesting um for those who are like die hard wing commander fans that's definitely a, a game to keep your eyes on especially if you got a good rig i think that's one of those good rig kind of games um also another game that i kind of wanted to bring to you guys attention that i only recently heard about um is called and i just put a little picture of it up here for you guys um it apparently it's not out yet um at pax they uh had demos of this game it is called dreadnought and i almost lost my mind when i saw it um they were showing gameplay you, you guys should go on and google it um if you guys like playing with uh capital size ships you know like um Battlestar Galactica kind of thing or Star Trek kind of thing where you actually are the captain of a capital capital ship rather than the actual fighter. Um Dreadnought is the game for you. And dude, I'm telling you, Jay, do you remember you remember that old cartoon called uh Star Blazer? No, I don't think I've ever you don't seen remember Star Blazer. There was this no. old cartoon that was called Star Blazer, and it was very similar to uh, Macross and uh, Robotech because you remember how in Robotech you know they would have the Zendredi come in with like all these big huge ships and stuff like that and all the big huge ships would be shooting at each other and everything you remember all that yeah so that's but basically what Dreadnought is big huge ships with like million not millions but like a whole bunch of massive turrets on them and big lasers a whole bunch of missiles going all over the place explosions everywhere i'm telling you you should go and look at some of the gameplay on youtube for dreadnought and you'll see what i'm talking about dude it it, it looks like it is a blast um apparently you know i contacted them i, I stuck my name in like their little community because i want to stay in touch with them I, i'm really hoping they keep me in mind so that they can uh you know maybe get me in on the beta or something like that um they're developing it i think for next gen systems as well as pc i think but um i think they are uh, i think when they were doing the demo it was only on pc so i'm not 100 percent certain if they're doing it on a next gen but i think they're doing it on next gen systems also but go check it out dread not the game it looks fresh if you like a whole bunch of explosions using stealth technology using you know a whole bunch of guns and ammo and warping and all this other kind of stuff dude it looks like it's a blast it, it definitely looks like it's it's one of those for all those space heads out there that love playing space games of that of that sort um so i know i've been jumping off about a couple of new games or whatever 
Um, what about you, Dinky? Have you have you caught wind of some new games or something or anything that you're interested in that have gotten a little bit of announcement or a little bit of anything recently? Um, nothing. I mean, just the 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 regular stuff that's out there. I haven't been looking into anything like you know underground or you know the like the no name titles that you know <laughs> some of us are like you're like oh what's that you know the, I mean the only thing that um. I was so looking so at actually actually tell this me week something. Was Bloodborne. Tell, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Bloodborne. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Actually, what I was gonna ask you though is tell me tell tell the people about where you are in Dragon Age because I know there's a lot of Dragon Age fans out there. Oh and, man, Dragon uh, Age. Because we had I've an been... interesting discussion at, at work um, just about where we were and what was going on and everything. And I think some other people might be interested. So, so tell the people where you at in Dragon Age right now. Well, I get. I guess you. I don't even know how far I am uh, in the game, but I bounce around a lot. So mm. I've, I'll focus more on with any RPG. I don't know why. I always focus on the side quest first <laughs> because i always feel like you know all the fetch missions with, with, yeah well what it well that's like in you know like dead island kind of style but this you know the, these fetch missions are actually better you know you actually get a decent reward not somebody like thank you and they give you some some bogus stuff but mm. um over the weekend, I probably put in like a good seven or eight hours playing and killed my first two dragons, slayed them up. So, you know, I had I had a big chest today and I said, let me go try to hit up this other dragon. And he just waxed me. So I, I'm like, I got to come back, <laughs> coming back. <laughs> so so like right now, I'm just trying to fine tune my squad. I, I, I got a I got a pretty good um, system down for a squad. And I can pretty much on not on almost any level, but mm. I, I could I could really I could really go through some 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 you know some bad guys. I could just like I, I could match up with anything, mm. you know, except for like dragons. You got to be careful with those. You know, you can't just be rolling up on them. But like most of the stuff, I'm, I'm matching up pretty well. Like you know, my guys are. I'm not getting into fights where I'm like, oh man, I, I can't wait till I get to another. Uh, campsite so I can get you know some potion or something because I'm <laughs> you know I'm, I just spent like you know five potions fighting a bear you know mm-hmm. so uh, I'm, I'm pushing through the story I'm already you know I'm in Skyhold I got stuff going on over there um, I pretty much got everybody I can get for companions mm-hmm. um, uh, I'm trying to do these uh, missions where you're you're, you're picking up uh we get these specialty skills. I haven't gotten anything like that. I think I'm, I'm close to getting one of them. So uh, I'm, I'm working on that. And I just uh, I just jumped into this mission, which I probably should have done earlier. But mm. I'm at the um, I'm at the castle where you have to try to save the the queen, or you know, turn her over to the bad guys. You know, it's all your choice. So mm. I'm I'm running through that. I. I I hate that mission because it's uh, all you do is a lot of talking. It's like hours of talking. Yes, it is. Like, how do you like this? Oh, this is great. Do you want to dance? Do you want to hook up? And like, uh, I'm a girl this time, so like, you know, everybody's trying to. All the chicks are trying to hook up with me. I can't get like a guy to like (laughs) get any love options. So, (laughs) I guess I'm gonna have to hook up with a chick. I'm gonna have to take one for the team. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. So uh, just that, trying to get like, uh, you know, like specialty items, you know, I've been finding, I found a couple of them um, where, you know, I, I found a sword that shoots uh, red, not sword, uh, arrow that shoots uh, a bow that shoots uh, red lyrium, which is pretty cool. Mm. And I'm, 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 I'm look. I need one more component to get this, uh, I'm going to get this uh, master dragon rune so I can attach it to it and slay dragons quickly so we'll see how that works out but uh actually in other uh, you know just continue on that I, I don't know about the ps3 but i know the xbox one and pc dropped some new dlc for dragon age today so that that is available yes jaws of hakon 
Oh, yes. I'm trying to get a pick, but there aren't a whole lot of pictures. There's not much out there. Yeah. Uh, so that you guys can at least see what it says, see what it looks like. But let me see if I can get this picture up. This is the picture that's floating around the interwebs. What's that? Everybody at the table? Well, the one that I have out, yeah, have yeah. up there, yeah. Um, uh, Matt 100's asking about your game, Jay. What game's that? Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Uh, I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been looking up this afternoon trying to figure out whether I want to indulge in that because I mean, I'm it looks. You, Jay. you know what, Jay? It, it looks fun, man. But I just, you know I, what? I, can't, I don't want to get pissed I off. I say, again. <laughs> take the plunge. I'm telling you, I bet you, I bet you, if you start playing and streaming that game, you're going to get a bunch of people jumping in, watching you, and trying to help you out. You're going to get pissed off, yes, because that's just the nature of playing it. But I'm telling you, it is co op, number one. And I do think that you get people that would help you out. I would hope so. You know what? I think, I, I'll, honestly, I'll it, I'll I say take the weekend. plunge. I say take the plunge. Because I'll be able to play this weekend. I'll pick it up this weekend, and then, um, um and stream because the, the reason why i don't like getting games like that because first they're like i know like the first couple hours of them are just painful and oh, if yeah, yeah. they're cool i don't know anybody else they got a ps4 and a <laughs> that'll want to play so <laughs> you know like i'm a little resistant to buying some of these games you know like on the ps4 which i mean in this case it's a ps4 exclusive so like you kind of you know you're kind of stuck you gotta play well it. i think like i said i Dude, there's there's there are a lot of really really cool people on Twitch. There's there's some assholes out there, yes, but there's some cool people on on Twitch that I bet if you started streaming it, they jump on there with you. If they saw you were playing it, they jump on there with you. Now, see, I'll probably pick it up this weekend because I, I I am itching to play a little. I mean, like I love Dragon Age. It's it's fun. Um, it lo so it looks it like a uh, Matt 100 might jump in there with you. He said he's got it. Well, he oh, there we go, man. One hundred. Yeah, I'll be on it Saturday, man. I'm gonna be. I'm. That's my game day. I'm gonna be hitting that up. So, yeah. I mean, the game looked wicked sick. I mean, I heard the story's pretty good too. So, dude, I'll be streaming. Just look me up. I'll probably be on there all day. So, <laughs> okay. once once I get once I get my morning chores out of the way, which should be fairly quick, I'll be on there. And I'll be I'll, I'll be doing that. I, I was thinking about even doing a little bit of Madden too. Um, I haven't I haven't done any streaming with Madden, so I might uh, I might get that because I I haven't you know splurged on Madden like in years. Yeah, dude, I played Madden. Jeez, uh, I tried to play it once, and um, I don't I don't know. I. <laughs> I tried. No, no, it's not that I'm not interested anymore. Ugh, I don't know what it is, dude. It, it's like the the past couple of years for sports games, I haven't played them like I used to. You know, it, it was like I I was I was you know how it was, Jay. We we play it hardcore, and well, um, I still do. I mean, like you I mean, do. I don't, but I, I mean, don't, us well, not every together. Game. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, we, I don't know. The both of us. I've been trying to get you to get some NBA. I mean, we haven't done that in like I don't forever. Know, so. dude. It's, I don't know what it is. I'm just not feeling it. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I, it's kind of lost some steam for me for some reason. I don't know. Maybe when, maybe when the playoffs kick off or something like that, maybe I'll get hype again. I don't know. Well, the I, only thing I get hype for, I mean, like I, I've been kind of anti Madden until this year. Um, mm -hmm. so I have too. I haven't. I played one game on. Uh, on when I, you know, when I finally set up everything with my Madden Ultimate Team and all this other junk, I played like two games or something like that, and then I was done. <laughs> I, I I've been actually playing quite a bit, so you know, like I'll, you know, when my, you know, when everything kind of dies down, and then you know, I jump on the PS, I'll I'll play a couple games of Madden. I've actually been enjoying it. I've been, you know, having a lot of fun with that, and of course NBA, I play that weekly. Um, and then when MLB the show come out, that I'm gonna be streaming like crazy, bro. That I'm I'm just gonna go crazy on that game. I can't wait, <laughs> I can't wait for that game to come out, man. That that they the the game is so good. It's so good. I mean it, it's just like uh, you know, all the elements of it is just it's fantastic. And mm. you know, if you love baseball, you just you just get into it. So that and you know 
I don't know. I guess, I guess with basketball, where I I don't know. I think maybe some people aren't used to you know some of the players. Like there's not really that one superstar player anymore that that keeps you coming back to it. Big. You know, you had you know like the Jordans and stuff, and you know like all the all the all the really good players of the the early 2000s. They're like dying off now. You know, nobody nobody's made this step. I mean, even though LeBron's good, I don't think he's like he's made that step where he, you know, where you're like, yo, I gotta get this game because I want to be with Breezy or Kevin Durant or <laughs> you know the beard or whatever. So yeah, you know, it's just oh, it's Matt One Hundred said his uh, gamer tag is Big Bud XWW. Um, if I'll, you I'll, see him on, if you see him on, and somebody sends you a message, that's him. So. All right. Well, I'm I'm straight up dirty helmet on there, so you'll find me. Dirty is the dirty. <laughs> All right, let me write that down so I can get that. So, because me, I'll forget. But yeah, Saturday is gonna be my day. I'm gonna I'm doing some uh, some definitely some streaming. Get on there and uh, have me have some fun. I need to I need to get a good workout because I I worked over Dragon Age, but you know when you yeah. play so much of that, you get tired. To do ah, that. that's what I end up doing, and that's probably my downfall. But I rotate between most of my games. You know what I mean? Yeah, I try to, but sometimes, I, like like you're saying with the NBA, sometimes you play a game and you just you want to play it, but you just don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you look at it and you're like, eh, nah, I, I need something fresh. You know, I need something new. So, I mean, like, Call of Duty used to be my go-to game. I'm not even playing that anymore. It's just like, you know, when you're bored, I just wanted some mindless fun. You'd be like, yeah, Call of Duty. Just go around, shoot some people, and that's it. But not even that anymore is becoming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like I was telling I was telling um, my sister, because uh, we were playing game with, we were playing uh, Call of Duty, doing all the little clan war stuff on our little small clan. And it was like the first time that I had done it in, golly, like three weeks. It was first, it was like two or three weeks. It was the first time I got on and actually done, you know, some serious Call of Duty stuff. So it was like, uh, it was like relearning the controls and stuff all over again. You know what I mean? Right. And by the time you get good at the controls, right, you just want to, you know, you don't even want to play it anymore. Uh, Yeah, I was getting pissed off. It was like, that's why, (laughs) you know, I stuck with it for like that day. You know, because they wanted to do it, and I was hoping that we'd be able to get some wins. So I was like, you know what? I got to stick with it. And I came back the next day, and it was like I said, the next day, I finally caught my stride. Next thing you know, it was like we were murdering people. You know, it was it was, it was was the wildest thing. It was like I, I went from, like, doing 5 and 17 every match to doing, like, 30 and 30 and 12 and all other kinds of stuff every match. So it was it was the wildest thing, you know what I mean? I, I I get I get a lot of game nights like that. I'll, I'll be on hot and then I'll be open. And then the next day I come back, it's just like what F- the wig, <laughs> like it, no love, no love. No so love. yeah, you see that they got uh, the Predator coming up there on uh, Mortal Kombat. Oh, they adding some more. <laughs> yeah, actually they they announced the Predator. They announced um, somebody else too. A couple of other new characters that they haven't. Really yeah, I thought. Used. Yeah, we might have covered some of those last week, but you know, recap they had uh, Jason uh, from uh, Friday the 13th. He's going to be there chopping people's heads off. Mm. Yeah, I I feel bad. I'm sticking my name up here under underneath my picture because I don't have one and I don't have one for you. So the person next to me is nameless Dirty Helmato. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it, I I gotta figure. I gotta make a little graphic for you. We gotta get. We gotta get some. I gotta buy some new graphics for the whole thing. You know, I gotta get a layout and all this other kind of stuff. I gotta upgrade. Gotta upgrade. Gats to upgrade. But yes, Mortal Kombat. I think when does that drop, Jay? That's in um. Ooh, Mortal I know Kombat. it's soon. I know it's soon. I don't know how soon, but I know it's soon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. You want to know oh, why? Oh, it's, it's the 14th next month. Oh, what next month? You want to know why I don't know? Because I'm not even interested in it. I, I can't. I can't. I won't buy that game until I hit 20 bucks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Man. 
It's like we were talking about yesterday. I I am probably not gonna get that game unless if somebody gave some... me a code or something like that. No, 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 no. I I'll probably end up giving that away even if I get a code because I am not. I've already told myself I'm not playing a fighter game until I get a fight stick because it was like we were talking about before, Jay. I can't manage a damn controller. I I. I can't. I just can't do it anymore. I there's something about it where me trying to get hype and me trying to get the combos and pull off the combos that I want to do, I don't quite have the coordination to be able to you do buttons with both hands as well as use the thumbstick or whatever. I I, I, I I don't have a problem. I don't think I'll have a problem learning a fight stick. It's just I haven't used a fight stick since you know an arcade game. I really don't. You know. That's the way and, I prefer. That's the thing. That's the way I prefer to do it when I play fighting. Yeah, games. but where are you gonna put a fight stick, man? You gotta get like a table, someplace sturdy because you, you need just put it on your lap. That's that's. I, that's I couldn't, the way a I lot couldn't of, do it on my just lap. Put it on your lap. I'd, I'd break it. You know. No, I'd break the good it. ones you won't break. The good ones, actually, the good ones that they have, um, a lot of times they so even, even sell parts with them. Whole... They even sell parts with them. So it's like yeah. they, they're, you know, they have a case that's big enough. Like there was one that I saw. Um, I can't even remember who does it. Uh, it might have been Mad Cats. Yeah, Matt 100 is on point today. Um, but the fight stick, I, I actually, I don't think it was Mad Cats, but it was somebody else. They had like a serious fight stick, and it had a case inside the fight. Is that stick. the one they were they were promoting like a couple of years ago? And it was it just a been. wicked one. It was like it was like hundred and fifty bucks for that thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, some of the one that Mad Cats do, they're like two hundred some odd bucks. Nah, I I can't, I can't do it. I just well, I'd yeah. Rather. I mean, most of those most of those are actually um, for people that play in tournaments. You know what I mean? Right. So like, there's a company named Ori. Um, there's another company, ooh, Dream Gear. Pfft, Dream Gear makes some cheap ones or whatever. Um, there's some others, because, you know, there's some that are like EVO licensed fight sticks or something like that. Um, but, you know, there's all different kinds. But what was hilarious, and I don't know, I, I think I might have sent this to you, but there was this one, as I was running through looking for fight sticks, because I was just curious to see if I could find some, right? I sent you a link to this one place, and I got to get this picture because this place is fresh, okay? Um, there's this company named X Gaming, right? Or X Arcade, I'm sorry. And they make fight sticks or whatever, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, that's nice. But they have, and I, I'm going to get this picture real quick. They actually sell full-size arcade cabinets, right, for your home. Oh. Oh, so would you just put the TV in there and <laughs> and you can just? But no, no, I gotta. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the picture up and and then I'm gonna read to you what this thing actually comes with, Jay. All right. So this this is what you are going to get for my birthday. Okay. <laughs> I've already Let's put see. I've already Let's put see. it out. Let's there. see it. You know we're, we're ooh I gotta find it now. Damn it! Damn it, it's man! I don't see it. Damn it, man! Got to get it up here. Boom. I'm putting it right over my face. Put it over the bunny face. This is Bunny 3000. <laughs> you see this thing? Awesome. This yeah, thing right like here. Bucks. Oh, my gosh. This thing is so gorgeous. Uh, bunny creaming. Okay. <laughs> Not on the computer. All right. Hold on. So you wrecked my Simo. Okay, okay. He sent me some some link messages and stuff. There's some uh, fight sticks that are compatible. Cool, excellent. Thank you. This fight stick. This is not a fight stick. This thing right here by um, X Arcade is like, uh, like every game, every retro gamer's dream. Okay. Um, it is called the X Arcade. Uh, get to their official site. Yeah, the, the missus definitely won't like it because this thing is an arcade. Ooh, and Dirty Helmato dropped out. Lord have mercy. Isn't that rude? Yeah, it is. That's so rude, Diggy. <laughs> you go <gonna laughs> drop out like that when I'm getting dude, all man, hype. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Dude, man, I, my internet sucks sometimes. He's just, <laughs> whoa. 
Like, okay. dude, I, I'm not even on wireless anymore. I'm like, I'm straight up plugged in. <laughs> Yo, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> okay, here it is. X Gaming. This thing that we're looking at right now is RK2 TV. All right? This thing is has comes equipped with 250 arcade built-in arcade classics all right it ties directly to your uh big screen tv it's got lighting it's got led lighting commercial grade components of course it's got two fight sticks it's compatible with um it's compatible with your consoles all right and um so like the arcade classics or whatever these things i mean it's got like everything so you know it's got like all the arc atari 2600 you know it's got all the atari 2600 games it's got all the midway stuff and these are like the actual games these aren't like i don't think okay now i'm not 100 percent if these if this is like i'm pretty certain these are like it's like an emulator okay so it they they say that they say that due to uh, legal implications, of course, they can't tell you how to load emulators or games without licenses. But it supports, <laughs> it does support open source emulators. Yo, so you can dude, add you're games. You're going to get five right? coming to your house. Dude, this thing is 25 This thing is $2,500. Uh, okay, I thought so, you were going to say 1000 I'm like, mm. no, 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 no. It's $2,500. Um, it's compatible with past, present, and future game consoles. You can add your own thing. It's got a trackball on it. Um, yeah, I see the trackball in the middle there, and it has, uh-huh. uh, I think it's a six uh, six button controller. The thing is two hundred and twenty five pounds, and it rolls. Yeah, it looks like it even has a quarter machine slot too. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. You know, it's just got it on there to have it because you don't <laughs> necessarily need it. Um, it's got except when your friends come over. Yeah, when your friends come over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's got pinball. You know, it's got like pinball taps or whatever on there oh, also you'll, you'll so you can play heaven. pinball with it um, dude this thing is like the ultimate freaking retro arcade Johnson <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, this thing is amazing uh, yo. I, I really I want this I, I, I want this I would I would sell a child for this I'd sell too <laughs> it's got it's got Street Fighter Two, Ghost and Goblins, Bionic See, those, Commando, those I'd be interested in. Nineteen forty one, nineteen forty two, Gunsmoke, Final Fight, Altered Beast, Golden does Axe. It, does it have uh, X Men? Uh, let's see. Who did? I think Konami did X Men, so I don't think it has that. Oh, it's just the I don't Midway. think they have Konami games on here. They've got Namco, Capcom, Midway, Atari. Uh, Sega, Taito, um, and SNK. I, I think that's all they have. I don't think they have because Konami did the you know like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and X Men and stuff. So right. I don't think it has all those. Oh it, yeah, Matt One Hundred says, does it have a Kari Warriors? Dude, it's got to have a Kari Warriors. I think <laughs> yeah. it. Kari Warriors was a jam. That was like the ultimate shooter. Right? That was the first uh, Bubble shooter. Bobble Operation Wolf. Oh, I used to love that joke. Operation Wolf was good. <laughs> oh man, Gladiator. That was fresh. Elevator Action. Elevator Action was a jam. Oh, oh my god. How much crazy. money you used to spend on that game? <laughs> oh dude. I used to waste so many quarters on that joker. Cybob, Xenophobe, Pit Fighter, Total Carnage, Narc. Pit Fighter was the jam. Cyberball, Gauntlet. I wonder, dude, they need to have more than just Gauntlet, though. They got to have, like, Gauntlet 2 and 3 and all this other kind of stuff. Gauntlet 2 is my favorite one. I yeah. enjoy that. Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3. Do they have Mortal Kombat 1? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't see it on the list here. I don't see why they oh, wouldn't, right. though. Yeah, Mortal Kombat was... I, 1 and 2 were my favorite. Oh, yeah. 1 and 2 was the were the ones that I got loose on. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So, ladies and gentlemen... You guys need to be like very, very, very generous and donate to the BJ Wants X Arcade TV Fund. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that I can put it right there in front of my TV and start streaming it. Like, look, guys, I've got it. Ah! 
<laughs> That's it. I'm just I'm streaming retro games. I all stream week. retro games for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting Nintendo emulators on my joint. <laughs> that's right. Tonight, Pac-Man 2. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Tonight, Pac-Man 2. Tomorrow, Tetris. Pyaw. <laughs> right. I'm getting I'm getting a hundred thousand. I'm making the game roll. <laughs> <laughs> Weapon Lord. I don't know. I haven't heard of Weapon Lord. I don't remember that game. Weapon Lord. Weapon Lord. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, what one, Mad 100 asking for weapon lord i gotta look to see if it says i'll see one that has warlords but not weapon lord oh man dude that's oh that's they gotta have much. they gotta have centipede on there i'm sure they oh do. hell yeah they got centipede centipede they got centipede oh love that game too breakout chopper command Chopper Command. Oh, is that the <laughs> one when you had to go to the little bases and save the people with yeah, the helicopter? Yeah, save the people and you go drop them off and stuff Floyd, like that. Yeah. Oh, that game was great. Yeah, it's Crystal Castles. Um, let's see what was another good one. Yeah, I if I had something like this, I would definitely have to get uh, uh like the what I forget what emulator that is, but it's whatever the SNES or the NES emulator is. I'd yeah. have to get that. Of course, I would have. I do have all of those Nintendo games, so these would just be backups. <clears throat> yes. Excuse me. Dig Dug. Oh my gosh, yes. Dig Dug has to be in here. I don't know. Yeah, Dig Dug was good too. Oh my gosh, yes. Dig Dug has. Oh to man, be we going old asteroids. School. Oh my god. <laughs> I love asteroids. Oh man, I, I played asteroids every opportunity. Adventure. Yes. Spy. Uh, what was that? What was that? Spy vs. Spy. Hunter? No, Spy Hunter? Oh, yeah. Driving game. That was crazy. Oh, that was the jail. Yeah, I'd have to get, like, the Neo Geo emulator, because I have all the Neo Geo stuff also. You too? Yes, yes. As well as all of these Atari games. Oh, man. I'm jonesing. I feel horrible. I got I gotta get one of these one day. So yeah, when I'm a millionaire, I'm gonna. Have we need five thousand because we need one for me. One yeah, for me. we need five thousand so we can. Oh well, no, you don't need five thousand. You just need one for me so you can come over and you can play it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have to come to your crib all the time. Yeah, you gotta come to my crib all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yes, the <laughs> Yurek Mazino is right. The most overcured, over overkill device for Pong. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely the truth. I'd be rocking. How much your bone cost you? Twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, twenty five hundred <laughs> bones. What? <laughs> it's vintage. Oh, man. But they uh, do have they do have like a full size arcade cabinet. So it's you know, and it's only a couple of hundred dollars. You know, a couple of hundred dollars more that has essentially the same amount of games in it, but it's an actual cabinet with a you know screen and all that other kind of stuff. And of course, they do sell. Uh, they sell a fight stick also um, for like a hundred bucks. This USB. So yeah, we love you, X Arcade. Thank you for being a part of our lives. Send us a beta. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Place. So, Friend ladies and gentlemen, after after we've jonesed off all the retro gaming and gotten all that all out of our system. Um, I just wanted to uh, make you guys aware of some things before we got off the air. Um, ladies of the round table, uh, live, they have uh, their their podcast that shows on this network as well. Uh, it comes on Fridays at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, they always have great guests on there as well. They're a little bit more high, higher profile than us. We're still getting off the ground, but we are – getting in some good guests um i'm gonna be i'll try to see if i can give you guys an update on what guests we'll be having come soon i'm gonna try to dig into getting some more uh maybe some more musicians on the show um as well as some other things uh we are like i said before i will be streaming on ladies of the round table on wednesday nights i do it essentially every wednesday night at 10 o'clock um also um i think Dirty, as well as myself, will probably be streaming uh, a decent amount this weekend on Saturday, if not Saturday and Sunday. So be on the lookout for that. Just go ahead and follow all of it. You know, follow Ladies of the Roundtable. You'll see when it pops up. Um, also follow Bunny3000 um, as well. Follow Heed Geek Swag 
on um, both Twitter as well as on Twitch. Uh, we're on all of those. And if you guys want to see older episodes, such as the interview that we did with Harmonix about Rockman 4, that was a great interview. Um, it was on Friday. Um, go to heedmag.com backslash geekswag. That's where I have the show notes for every episode that we've done. Um, even before then, we had uh, Roto VR, who make a VR um, platform. Uh, that will go along with uh, your Project Mo Morpheus. I did an interview with them a few weeks ago. Go check out that episode as well. We've got a whole bunch of old episodes um, that also feature our girl Makita, the Grim Freaker herself. Um, she is the owner of ZGamerOnline.com, so go check out her articles as well as her content there as well. We thank you guys so, 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 so much um dirty helmets channel is dirty helmet one is his twitch channel um bunny 3000 is my twitch channel and um the channel for uh geek swag in general is heed geek swag podcast twitch channel for the whole crew and uh definitely keep it locked here on ladies of the round table the stream team here is off the chain we got a whole lot of other great uh streamers here on this channel as well we thank you guys for being here with us thanks Matt 100, you wrecked my Zeno. Star Wolf, sorry we missed you. You know, came in a little bit late, but you can check the highlights out later on. Uh, check us out, heedmag.com backslash geekswag and see older episodes. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Audi 5000.